Good morning, everyone. So today we're going to get started with a one dimensional motion, 1D motion. And that's just motion in a straight line, uh, whether it be straight line on the on the x axis or straight line on the y axis. So we begin our journey into 1D motion by defining some key terms. We're going to take a look at the definition of the integer, position, reference frame, distance, displacement, speed, velocity, time, and time interval. So let's just get started with all that. Now, most of our motion in the, in the first part of one dimensional motion will be along the X axis. So if I draw a line like this, and let's say that in the middle of this, I have my integer zero. And then on either side of the zero, like on the right-hand side, I'll just uh, pop in um, four integers here, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. On the left-hand side, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So you're familiar with this, this is the x-axis. We're gonna stay here or start here first on the x-axis, then we'll go to the y-axis when we get to gravity and all that good stuff. So in your algebra classes, this is your num number line that's uh, represented by the x-axis here. So an integer as you know, it's just any positive or negative number. I'll just write the symbol for number. Any positive or negative number on the number line, including zero. So those are all integers. We know this basic math. But what we're going to see is that we're going to be translating all these mathematical terms to physical terms. We go from integer to something called position. So definition of position. The basic definition. There's a location in space you know, relative to some starting point. So relative to some starting point. And that position is represented by a number and a sign. So in your math classes, in, in algebra, these are all integers. But in physics, these are going to be positions relative to some starting point. And we can say that the starting point in this case is the origin. So all of these numbers are plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 units with respect to the origin. Now on the left-hand side, these positions are negative 1 unit, negative 2 units, negative 3, negative 4 units to the left. And those units can be represented by meters. Um, you know, uh, joules, coulombs, whatever the case may be, but we're going to start off with our basic SI unit of distance and displacement, which is the meter. So these positions are relative to this zero. If I start at plus one, then this plus two here, for example, will be plus one units to the right of this starting point. But since I'm starting, well, since I have my uh, starting point at the origin, the, this number here is plus one unit to the right, and this one is minus one unit to the left, plus two, minus two, and so forth. So a position really, 
as any location or a location in space relative to some starting point. And that is uh, represented by a number and a sign. Represented by a number and the sign, the sign being positive or being negative. So when we say that our position is plus one units, or we can say plus one meters with respect to, to zero, it's plus one units to the right, but uh, we can uh, further classify that position by. Um, you know, uh, locations in space, um, what I want to say, I want, um, directions is what I want to say. We can classify this sign as a direction. So this position here, plus one, will be one unit to the east of zero. And then this one be, would be one unit to the west of zero. And of course, this would be north and that would be south. We'll, we'll get to that when it goes to the y-axis. So those plus and minus signs indicate a direction relative to a starting point. Our starting point in this case is zero and all of the numbers are um, amounts to the east or west of that starting point. Plus one, one or one unit to the east, plus two or two units to the east, plus three, three units to the east, plus four or four units to the east, and likewise with the, with the west, westerly numbers. So for example, we could say that something is plus one meters. This plus one would be the same thing as saying one unit or just give the um, SI unit of distance here. This is plus one or one meter to the east of zero. That's our starting point. That is our reference point. Remember, a position is a location in space relative to some starting point. And our starting point is the origin in this case. We can start anywhere. And so plus two. or two meters to the east. We can say minus four or four meters to the west. So I hope you get that so far. In algebra, an integer is just an arbitrary number with a sign, plus or minus. But we take everything, pretty much everything, or a lot of things in mathematics, and we translate them to actual physical things in physics, right? So we go from integer to position. And next, we're going to see how we can go from distance to displacement, and then also from speed to velocity and so forth as we take our journey down or into physics. So these are just the, again, examples of position, plus one, one meter to the east, plus two, two meters to the east, minus four, or four meters to the west. And they're just points. They are locations. They are where you are in that moment. They mean nothing else than just those things, locations. Okay, location where? Um, I'm going to the east relative to that signpost, which is the origin, you know, one meter to the east, or I could do four meters to the west, and now the signpost is on the other side of, of you, just depending on where you're looking. Okay, so our next thing we're gonna define is distance. I'll draw the 
number line once again. Okay, starting point still in the middle, still zero. Now let's define distance. So basically distance is the total amount traveled or covered. Um, what do you say this way? The total amount of travel between Two positions. You can also just say points, but to be uh, technical, we'll just say positions. We just define position from integer. So we'll just keep with um, uh, that language. So, for example, if I, you know, that's my verbal, that's my description of distance. So, how would I say define that quantitatively, mathematically speaking? Let's say that I would um, start my travel at plus four. Then I go all the way to minus four. Let's see if I can change the color here. All right, one, one thing is in the way. So I start at plus four, go to minus four, and then, you know, my diagram here, I'll go back to minus one. So what's the total distance covered? Remember, distance is the total amount of travel between two positions. My first position is plus four. My last position is minus one. What I'm going to do for distance, I'm going to count everything, add every, uh, add everything up and come up with the total. So I go plus four to here, that's four units. I go four more units, that's eight. Then I go back to minus one, that's another three units. So four, eight, 11. My distance traveled, I'm gonna use the units of meters. My distance traveled is just 11 meters. This example there, my distance, 11 meters. And the thing about distance, it doesn't have a direction associated with it. It's just a number. So I traveled 11 meters, fine, there's no, um, regard to direction, north, south, east, west, southwest, those things don't matter when you're just talking about distance because distance is just a number. The total amount of travel between two positions represented by a number only. So I'll say rep, rep presented by a number only. That's distance. Football field. I start at the end zone. I go to the 100 yard line. I come back to the opposite um, end zone or the end zone I started at. That's a distance of 200. So now we're going to see the difference between distance and displacement. They're related, but there's a dis uh, there is a difference. I'll say distance. Okay. So. Go back, go forward, losing space there. A lot of times in your textbooks, they'll, they'll say the word distance, they mean displacement. So we're gonna come to um, understand or get used to the fact that these terms are inter interchangeable, but technically they should be um, used distinctly. So this placement is a difference between two positions. We have find position as any location in space. Those two there represent position. This placement is the difference between two positions. The difference between 
a starting position and a final position. So difference between two positions represented. Oops. by a number and a sign. Later on, or right away, maybe in your textbooks, I'm just trying to make this simpler. But in your textbooks, technically, they will say, oh, displacement is represented by a magnitude and a direction. That's the same thing as saying number and a sign, All right? So, Magnitude, anytime you see this, is a number. How much of something it is, right? A number, magnitude, how big. Um, direction, where are you going? The sign. So that's why negative five and say five are different. Negative five, we're gonna see is a unit of displacement or a result of the difference between two positions and five is the distance traveled, the total amount. Remember, distance is just a number. So we five meters, this would be negative five meters. Okay, so let's um, be quantitative about uh, displacement. How can we take that verbal description and um, do some math. So displacement uh, quantitative, so this is what I wanna say. <laughs> so this will be the qualitative, quality, qualitative description of displacement, and this will be the quantitative, the mathematical description of displacement. So delta x, the symbol for displacement, is difference between two positions those two positions are a final position and an initial position. So let me define explicitly. Delta X is the quantitative description of displacement. X final is my final position and X initial is my initial or starting position. So let me go back to this slide here. Let's say that my final position, <clears throat> I'm looking at distance here. My final position is minus one, that's where I stopped. That's where I ended. My initial was plus four. Now again, for displacement, the numbers and signs matter. Right, so final position is minus one because this whole thing is a location relative to some starting point. That's why you have the sign, right? So this is one meter to the west of your starting point, your reference point, which is zero in our um, uh, running example. My initial position plus four. What is the displacement then? Well, the displacement would just be final position plus four minus, you can do this if you want to do that, just to get used to it. Plus four, you know, that's meters, plus four minus minus one. Integers, you know, that's going to be a plus. Same rules apply here. So that's plus four plus one meter. My displacement is plus five meters. Oops, I totally botched that. My fault. I'm looking at plus four. Okay, so let me go, let me go back. Uh, let 
little editing there. Okay. <clears throat> but okay, if we did start at minus one and go to plus four, that's that's correct. For, you know, our but our our context that we just gave, we're gonna switch the numbers around, right? Okay. So this is going to be um, final position minus one, minus plus four. Okay, final minus initial. So that's going to be negative one, that's four, which is negative five. My displacement is five meters to the west. So you do the math, but then now at the end, we're going to translate what we see mathematically into something physical, right? We just don't say minus five meters and be done with it. In physics, we evaluate what's going on here. What, what's, what does this actually mean in reality, right? So this would be negative five meters or five meters west. So that's our displacement. Our total displacement is five meters to the west. Final position was minus one, initial position plus four. And we can make some sense out of that by being uh, saying that there's negative five meters to the west because we're still in the westerly domain as it were. Right, we still we ended up here, but we're still in the westerly region with respect to this zero. Remember this zero starting point. These are all easterly positions. These are all westerly positions. We wound up, we ended up in the west for an overall displacement of five meters to the west. Based on the math here, what we have. Uh, what we uh, have uh, concluded. So again, uh, final position minus one, initial plus four, negative one, minus four, minus five. Okay, so let's do a couple of other examples and we'll go on to other definitions. Yeah. Okay, so let's say I had a final position of negative 20 meters and um, initial position of uh, plus 100. So these are positions. Remember, I start at plus 100 and I wind up plus 100 with respect to some reference point or starting point, remember we can just keep in mind, still our reference point is zero. It doesn't have to be. We know that conventionally in algebra, the origin is where everything starts from when we start counting from that. But in physics, we can start anywhere in something called a reference frame, which I will be defining here in a second. It doesn't matter where you start, pick a spot, and choose everything relative to that starting point. So that's the idea with uh, starts and reference points in physics. Okay, so we have those two positions, displacement. Delta X would be Final minus x initial. So we say negative 20 minus 100. You know, this is an understood plus in there. You'll get used to this fact that this is just an integer setup. We just interpret it physically at the end. So negative 20 minus 100 is going to be uh, negative 120 meters. Or same thing, 120 meters west of zero. In this case, zero, or 120 meters west of some start, which in just 
this case just happens to be the position of the integer zero. I can make it starting point, negative 500, just doesn't matter. Just keep everything relative to that. Okay. So next example, let's say my position. Negative 500. Initial position. It's whatever. Uh, plus one. Very imaginative on that, but uh, quick, quick example again. Um, x final x final minus x initial. So let's say. Negative 500 minus 100, negative 600, or centimeters west. So again, that should make some sense as far as um, it being west, because we wind up in the west. We end up in the westerly domain with respect to the starting point. Now, if I switch those numbers around, we'll see you around. They change. Okay, so if I have my um, final position as plus 100, you know, this is going to be minus minus 600 meters east. Okay. So E for east or W for west, right? So that's pretty much it on displacement. I started at negative 500 and I wound up in the easterly domain. So I'm going towards the east. My displacement is 600 meters to the east. My magnitude is 600. My number is 600. My direction is east or my sign is east. Plus 600 in the final case versus negative 600 in the top case. So that's displacement. Um, so there's that on that and go on to the next part. Okay, so I, I, I skipped over this one, but um, we kind of, you know, define this term, uh, talking about the other terms, a uh, reference frame. All a reference frame is, is just an axis. And then you have a reference point on, in that axis on that axis. Our axis in this case, the x-axis, our reference or starting point is zero. It can be any starting point. So basically um, a reference frame, it's just any axis really, x or y axis, z axis, doing three, dimension, three dimensional uh, vectors or physical quantities like torque, angular momentum, we'll start going to the z axis like down the line. So the reference frame is just any axis um, with a starting or reference Um, along that axis. It's a, it's a medium by which you ascribe positions, calculate distances, displacements, velocities, speeds. You have to do that within some kind of medium. And this medium or this frame, this geometry, whatever you want to say, is what we call a reference frame. It is something that we refer to in order to do calculations like distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, force, et cetera, energy, right? Momentum, all that. You have to have a reference frame that is any axis with a starting or reference point along that axis. So basically, we've been drawing 
our reference frames. One, two, three, four, plus, one, two, three, four, minus this, basically, without too, um, being too technical, is our reference frame, the x-axis. We have the y-axis, x and y-axis, that whole thing, that plane is a reference frame. Um, Z-axis, if you put that in there, that's a reference frame in three dimensions. That's it for that. Um, so we needed to do all the other stuff. So speed, speed and velocity. You don't see those terms uh, interchange with each other, but um, they are different. So speed is, Mm, let's see. It is basically your total distance, total distance traveled, because we know that distance is the total amount of travel between two positions. But speed is total distance divided by a total time frame or time interval. And mathematically, we can just say D divided by T, or the symbol for speed being S. And we'll just say, it's our equation for speed. This is the you know, quantitative uh, equation for speed. And this will be the qualitative equation, the description, the verbal, verbiage, total distance divided by time interval. And the units for distance, of course, meters, units for distance, uh, time rather, is seconds. So this will be meters per second. Speed and velocity have the same units, meters per second. But the thing that distinguishes them is that velocity has a sign. Speed does not. Speed is just a number. You are in your car and you're looking at your speedometer. It's just telling you how much or how fast you are traveling. It's not telling you where. It's telling you how the value of your speed, 50 miles an hour, 60, 70. But as you're looking out the window, that entire thing with you looking out the window and your speedometer is a velocity. So that brings me Next definition, velocity is total displacement, See? distance to displacement, divided by total, or I can just really just say time interval. So same, same, slightly redundant. the qualitative description of velocity, the numerical or the quantitative mathematical equation for velocity, V equals delta X over delta T. And in our CVPM, we are going to be measuring positions and times. We are not uh, necessarily, at least specifically, we are not going to be measuring displacements and time intervals. We can take all of those positions and get displacements. We can take all those times and get time intervals. But in the lab itself, we are not going to be measuring displacements and times. We're going to be measuring positions. But, uh, displacements and time intervals we will be measuring positions and moments of time. One, two seconds, three, four at this position. And then we will put all of our data in what is called a position time data table, which we've seen already. And then we'll be making position time graphs. We will never make displacement time interval graphs. We will always be making position time graphs. From there, we can get displacements and velocities and accelerations, but principally our measurement, the things that we're going to measure are positions and moments of time, not displacements and time intervals. 
So as you can see here, units of displacement, of course, meter or centimeter, whatever type of distance unit. Here's seconds. So the units of velocity are meters per second. And lastly, let me go ahead and I'll come back to some examples on the velocity here. We won't see speed so much, not unless it's directly um, mentioned in the problem, but we'll totally be working with velocities. Um, and so time, you know, basically just a singular moment. Leave it at that. Right. And then time interval is the difference, right? It's the difference between two moments of time. This is what we're dealing with. The difference. Two moments of time. So right, so we have delta t final time minus initial time. So let's say I have my cart. I'll show that in class. It's just static. Time is equal to zero. The initial time is zero, and then we let it run, and then we stop it. Say five seconds later, that'll be my final time, my tf. So delta t to be distinguished from moments, right, is the time interval ti not the wrapper uh, initial time the final or final time or final moment of time. And the uh, time interval is the difference between those moments. So I want you to definitely uh, get used to the difference between the time and time interval, speed and velocity, dis distance and displacement. That's over time, um, no pun intended. Uh, as we go along, you will become very familiar with it. You, you'll totally get used to it. So let's say, one other thing I wanna say about velocity is basically, <clears throat> And we'll come to understand average velocity versus instantaneous velocity. But velocity is basically the amount of time it took to change your position. Or basically, a change of position is a displacement. So again, um, it takes you time to go from place to place, right? And the time it takes you to go from place to place is your velocity. So if you're just talking about distance, two positions, okay, it's my displacement. If I'm talking about it in the context of time, now I can use velocity. So for example, um, before I get to my velocity examples, we can say another way of thinking about velocity uh, is, you know, keep it simple, displacement over time, delta x over delta t. A couple of other qualitative descriptions. Uh, velocity is the rate of change of position. Delta x over delta t. Displacement we define as the difference between two points. Another way of looking at displacement, the change of position. When we talk about rate of change, anytime we see this rate of something, time. It took you time to do something. It took you a rate of, ch of change. It, it took you an interval to change my to change your position. So therefore, we get this delta x over delta t rate of change of position. Dx dt for calculus. Delta x delta t for us as we go along. And this is a slope equation, the slope of this, which gives me velocity, all that stuff we can start interpreting from this information. And that's going to make us powerful physicists because now we can look at data, linearity, we can look at the slope of it, we know what's going on in that data. 
is the slope linear, nonlinear? Non what else can we evaluate from it? Can we make an equation of a line or equation of a curve? How many things? <laughs> so again, uh, another way of looking at velocity and displacement. So going back to uh, one of the other examples, let's say it took me five seconds to change my position, delta x, that is, right? Because we, we know that delta x is final position minus initial position divided by final time minus initial time. Right. So let's say my final position was first number that comes to mind plus five minus seven. Right. And the minus sign is there. It's not going to be part of the integer of the position because it's part of the equation. These were all positions. And say, like I said, it took me five seconds. So my final time is five minus zero. And one thing to keep in mind, if we know this by now, time doesn't have a sign. It cannot be negative. It's just a number. So five minus seven, negative two meters, five minus seven divided by five seconds. So that's velocity is equal to negative two fifths meters per second. Or we can get rid of the fraction and just say point uh, negative point four meters per second. So we can leave it like this. I prefer the decimal uh, form because you can deal with all the fractions. Complicated fraction, 21, 50 seconds. You know, I'm going to reduce that. So negative 0.4 meters per second or 4 meters per second. What direction? What direction? East, west? You guessed it. West. All from evaluating here. Remember, remember uh, the delta x is a change of position or a difference between two positions. Same, same. Divided by five minus zero. So that's my velocity. I, I have traveled, or well, my velocity is in a direction west at this number, four meters per second. So again, going back to the example of you in the car, you're looking at your speedometer. Well, the speedometer is recording whatever speed you're going. And then you're looking out the window so that all that together taken together right just to circle that entire system of you and the car uh looking at uh and the speedometer then that would be the a picture of velocity i'm going west at this value four meters per second your speedometer says four meters per second if it was in meters you know four meters per second and you're looking west that's a velocity um So that's about it on that. I'm going to define all those, all those terms. Um, so again, just to keep, in, keep things in mind. So I want to definitely keep this as an introduction to everything, because the next two classes later on this week, we will be starting our CVPM or constant velocity CV particle model. And I will be giving you packets for that. And we're going to go systematically, similar to what we did here, define terms, and then we're going to implement the scientific method. What are we looking at? This buggy car and this meter stick, and what can we measure? What relationships are there? What data can we get? What data can we graph? What's the standard deviation of that data? What's the standard error on that standard deviation? What is the percent error if we have something to compare it to? What evaluations can we make? So my hope for you all is that we start to get into the, you know, the baseline of becoming physicists. Because the true physicist's job is just to use critical thinking, all right? We're going to look at, evaluate all kinds of different set 
types of data, whether it be mechanics, electromagnetism, energy, momentum, we, we start developing a facility in evaluating information and to communicate that in as easiest way possible um, to our audience, whether the audience is a scientific audience or general public. So that um, the CVPM here is gonna be a way of us uh, applying a lot of this stuff. So I think at this point, we'll just go to some examples um, in your textbook. Um, let's see here. So yeah, we're gonna just take a look at, you know, the first part of your Inspire Physics text and get to some example problems. Um, someone's here or elsewhere. Uh, this first bit on motion diagrams, we will, we will be exploring those within our CVPM. Coordinate systems, we had somewhat of an introduction there. And now I would like us to uh, you know, get to some examples in velocity. So some displacement equations. So, um, so right. So that's something that we'll do um, in this text and maybe even the other text. So we'll have um, some velocity stuff. I believe it's here. Uh, right here, yeah. So we'll do some velocity examples in this in this set. Okay, that's it for now. We'll talk more in the next class. All right. Peace.